guys, this is going to be a tutorial on how to make a um, Pokeball in Final 4D. So, I'm sorry for the shitty quality of this video, Hypercam kind of sucks. But, um, anyway, this is this is the final image. Um, it looks kind of bad because it's from Hypercam, but it's pretty nice in, in real life, or on the computer at least. I don't know what you call real life, but, uh, let's go ahead and open up Cinema 4D. First thing you're gonna do, and then uh, you're gonna open a sphere, okay, and you're going to then make a material, drag down, make it black, add a reflection, make a reflection about eight, um, so then drag the picture on the black, make it a uh, Fresnel or Fresnel, make the brightness like 14 or something like that, and the uh, mix strength 10. Uh, duplicate it twice and make one of them like make oh yeah, make one of them white and then one of them red and change the color. Don't change the reflection. Make sure you change the reflection. Or you get screwed over. All right, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go take the sphere and you're gonna hit C. Actually, before you hit C, uh, change the segments. Um, I didn't exactly do that. But, uh, change the segment to like 300 so then you get the smoothest look you can get. Then you go to Throwsy and make it 90, uh, 0, 0, and uncheck randomize. And then click break now. Open that. Uh, take, um, top one of those. Oh, I, I didn't do it right here. I, I didn't do that. But then you're gonna take the top one. And, um,. And you're gonna move it up. God damn it, I forgot to do it again. Okay, third time's a charm here. Make it two, then 90, zero, zero. Uncheck randomize. Okay, done. And then now you see you can move that up. So then, um, control click on both of them and go to core. Uh, you can rename them. I rename them up from the other so you guys can see what I'm working with. Um, uh, Click them both and go to the coordinates and drag the Y until the desired space is created between the two for the, the little line in the Pokeball. Uh, I did a little too much here, but you'll see later it's a little too much, but it doesn't really matter. It still looks pretty good. Anyway, um, I make it point nine right here just to be easy. Then um, what you're going to do is you're going to drag the red onto the top, white onto the bottom. What you're going to do is you're going to make a tube. And, um, you're gonna make the scale of dimensions down so that it fits inside that little thing right there. Now you're gonna scale it down to the top, on the top too, so it's not too thick, so it doesn't stick up the sides. And then, uh, you're gonna scale it so it's just right there, and then drag the black material into there. Uh, yeah, yeah. So then, uh, you have that. And, um, then you're gonna make another tube. And you're gonna, oh, I made a disc here, what the hell, god damn it, sorry guys, I'm a little later for me to make the tutorial, but anyway, we're gonna take this tube, hold shift and rotate it so you get 90, exactly, and then, uh, oh, I scaled the wrong part there, there you go, you gotta scale it down to a, you'll see, about what size you need, like, it's about like this, so you need kinda, um, just, you'll, you'll see. Oh, and by the way, it's easier if you just don't move the X the whole time, just leave everything at zero for the X, because it makes it easier. So right here, I'm trying to mess with it to get the right dimensions. And, um, then you put it right there, like right in the middle of the line. Put it halfway into the sphere, half of it out. So it looks like that a little bit, and I move it down here a little bit. And then, then, then what you're going to do is you're going to use, I don't know if you guys know how to use this, but you're going to use a tool called the bool tool. And it's under the same thing as the array is. But first, you need to hit C to make the uh, that tube edible, the inside tube. Shift click on so that you select them all three, and then click right click, connect and delete. I right, then take the bool tool, drag the um the big sphere on the top and the uh, other sphere on the bottom under the bool tool, and then you can reposition that and it'll make a cutout. Okay, as you can see. And then you gotta drag the black material. 
onto that little cube that you just cut out on the little sphere. I mean, sorry about that. And then um, start to see it's kind of looking like a pokeball so far. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take another tube. Yeah, there's a lot of tubes in here now. Actually, I just duplicated this one. It's a lot easier if you just do that. Actually, I'm not gonna lie. I like shortcuts in life. Um, so uh, that's what I did. I just duplicated that. And then you're gonna make that white, and then you're gonna scale that down and pull it out a little bit so that it's just sticking out a little bit. And now you can really start to see that it's looking like a pokeball. Then I'm gonna do that one more time. And uh, it looks best if you're head on with the Pokeball, by the way. Otherwise, you get a little, like, lines and stuff some places. I don't know why, but. Then you duplicate that again, pull it forward a little bit, scale it down a little bit. And then, uh, scale down a lot, actually. And then stick it right on the end. And then you're pretty much done. So, um, there's your Pokeball. Let's show you what it looks like when you render it. Oh, first I'm going to show you guys how to make some lighting. So just make a plane and then uh, add a cloner. Drag it into a cloner. Um, take the cloner and change it from grid array. Oh, first make the color, take the specular off. Oh, by the way, when you make the material, take the specular off. That's what I usually like to do. Uh, add luminance and make it like 250. Drag it onto the plane, not the cloner. Click on the cloner, make it grid array. Drag the middle count to zero or to one, actually, and then uh, gonna change the size of the thing, um, the the cloner object. So you can see me do that right here, and uh, you're gonna make it so this this is three by three. Well, you don't have to, but it's preferable if you do. So uh, you gotta make that, and then just raise it up in the sky, and then. Um, I think I'll show you what it looks like when you render right here. Yeah, see that looks like, that's looking pretty good. There's a lot of reflections, but uh, you can turn your reflections down if you want. I mean, it doesn't really look bad. I just prefer to make some more realistic reflections look. But you can do whatever you want. So then I duplicate this plane right here. I take it, but I, I move it up. I scale it a little bit and then move it down. I don't scale it, actually. I just rotate it. Um, and I move it over to the side here, so that the, it's so leaning down onto the, uh, or not leaning down, reflecting down onto the, um, Pokeball. Then I take another sphere, add it over on the other side with some light, add some luminance, and then, then what you do is you add a floor and a background. Right click on the floor, go to Cinema 4D Dags, Compositing, and then, uh, uncheck Self Shadowing and check Composite Background. And then when you render it, that looks pretty good. Now the last thing you're going to need to do here is really simple, but it does increase the render time a fair bit, I'm going to tell you, but it looks a lot nicer when you really render it. So see that right now, and then what you're going to do is you're going to go to your render settings, and then you're going to go to effect, and then ambient occlusion, and then another effect, global illumination. And then when you render it out, it'll look like this kind of. You know, this is what you should do for all your still images. Don't do it for animations because it takes way, way too long. But for still images, it's highly recommended. And you get that nice shadow under the thing, if you can see that. And then, um, that's pretty much it. So, that's the Pokeball. Thanks for watching, guys. This has been a tutorial sponsored by Wizard Hacks. Thanks for watching, guys.